I don't think you can see it in the camera at all, but there's a circular mark that was made by the set screw. It tells me where. the center is and I missed the center a little bit so I'll walk it over a little bit there it is this whole process is to lock the hub to the axle so the, the key keeps it from going in a circle around the shaft but this keeps it from going back and forth on the shaft so I drill a little hole make a nice little socket This is like a number four, I think. But it makes a perfect little pocket for the tip of the set screw to fit into. I'll come back by and I'll dress these shafts off. Yeah. Well, that was the sixth one here. And I got, let's see, one, two, three, four. Four, five, three, eight more on the inside, but I got to get somebody to help me flip this thing over. It's too big for me. Hey guys, so I'm finished on the bottom here on this part. The, this is the last time I'm going to be underneath here for a long time. Basically, I greased all of the pillow blocks and lubed the chains painted all the exposed areas that were metal that can rust like raw steel uh, and then I also went through let me zoom it in so I lost a bunch of video when I was putting all the sprockets on and so I'm going to revisit that just to answer some questions and uh, clarify it. If anybody really is seriously thinking about doing this, it might be helpful. So there's eight sprockets and four chains on the bottom that link them all together. You can see there's one sprocket here, two here, one there, and I went and I drill these set screws out and put divots in them for the I didn't drill the set screws out I took the set screws out and drilled a divot for it to seat into so that the sprocket can't move laterally on the shaft I also did it on all of the pillow blocks on this end so that the whole shaft can't move back and forth in there load does amazing things with shafts I also there's four lock rings that hold these bearings on these tensioners. And I did the same here, I put a divot. And like the, might get a closer shot and a picture, but there's an L-shaped bracket made of one inch by half inch steel that's connected to a pivot right here. So it lets the, it lets the shaft find its position to tension both chains and the same here so I got a little jack screw I can screw that bolt in and it hits the inside and it brings this up pretty simple but as you can see it turns all the shafts on that side based on the other the tenth or the, the ninth and tenth sprocket are the big ones on the outside that the actual motors turn to move this guy up. So when this paint's all dry, I'm going to flip it over and put it back on stands and I'm going to reassemble it. Pretty cool, huh? So here's a little walkthrough of these things, give you a good look. The 
There's the tensioner. There's the other one. And you can see yellow paint, that's where I put paint on the nuts. In Arizona, at least in the desert here, in the summer when it's humid, it gets so cool at night and the metal gets cold and then in the morning it will sweat everywhere, underneath, upside down, sideways, and it'll get to put in surface rust. Well, if you put a little paint that runs around the threads, it keeps that water from wicking into the threads later. When I put it together, I'm going to put this, a copper-based anises, in the hubs where they go on the shafts in case I ever want to get it apart again. So I got this lubed with some copper coat. It's like an anti-seize, but it's copper based. I spent a lot of time like polishing the keys and getting these where they just slide right together to where they're supposed to be. And of course there's a divot in this hole that lines it up, it locks it. Uh, you probably didn't see it, but it moved over a hair when it hit the bottom. Sounds like the neighbor's out. Here's the radio. There it is. Okay, so I got the hubs all on, and I've gone and painted every little bit where something can rust. And now it's time for this guy, as the wrench goes in the floor. This guy, that's the control. Let me zoom this thing in a little bit. That's it. Cool. So now I'm ready to put the motors on. Well, let's see if this motor goes on there without a battle. Oops. 
see something. There it is. That's the wrong one in there. Sure do. I actually made new pins because the other ones were a little too loose for my liking. Gotta be real careful with these, you guys. Feels like it's starting to see. There it is. One down. Now for the other one. <laughs> okay, let's try this again with the same assembled correctly. This side was a little cockeyed and I made it line up by working the, uh, making a new pin that's bigger and reaming it, the holes. So it's, it's a real snug fit now. Well, let's see where we at. Looks like it's right there. Got to go close. It's almost tight already. So I can adjust the tension, screwing this bolt in a little bit, and I'm locking this jam nut down below.
right. Almost there.